G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. And his sidekick SJ. G'day guys. G'day guys. In the workshop today we're looking at an Audi Q5 2011 model with that big 2 litre engine in it. We're doing the rear brakes on it. There's just one little tricksy thing that we need to be aware of, so stay tuned and we'll get it sorted. So what do we have to do first? We put it all the way up. Okay, can you do that? Which button is it? This one. What's that say? Um, up. Up. Can you press it please? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. The wheels! They're off the ground, aren't they? Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Stop. Press the down button. Plonk. That's it. Well done. Thank you. All right. So, SJ, what do we got to do next? We need to get this off. Okay. Now, how do we do that? We do that and then in the little hole, up. and just give it a good tug. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah. Pull it hard. Pull it back your way. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah. Good girl, well done. So now we've got all the nuts. We can see all the nuts in here, haven't we? But there's one special tool that we have to do for one nut. Let's find out what that is. So SJ, what's that special tool that you've got in your hand? This. And what's that? Where does that go? Um. One of the nuts, very good. It's a safety nut lock. So we got that out of the boot, didn't we? and we need to undo the nuts. And one of those nuts is a special one, which is that special tool that you're holding just right in your hand there, isn't it? All right, so SJ, you're gonna undo the nuts now with a rattle gun. How do we do that? Can you show us how to do it, please? Yes. So away you go. Push in there, press the trigger. Away you go, yep. Press, hang on tight. Hang on tight. Away you go. Hey, keep going, keep going. You got it. <coughs> Whoops. <laughs> do you need help? Yeah, yeah. I'll show you. <laughs> Let's Look try again. We've got to push. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and we try this one. Ready, yeah. set, go. Press the trigger. But I want you to do it with me. <laughs> nice one. And the next one. Away you go. Press the trigger. <laughs> nice. Well done. The wheel's I'm off now. Fall on me. <laughs> okay, we can take them off for a sec. <laughs> got that one off. <laughs> So we've got the scan tool hooked up at the moment. We're just going to look for some fault codes anyway. So this is an Audi. Can you see where Audi is? Can you press that one? That one right there? Is that Audi? Yes, please. Yep. And press automatic selection, the top one. Yes, please. Yeah, it takes a little while to get through it, so you just have to be patient with it. We can't stay here forever or it will go night time. It will go night time. It's having a talk to all the computers and it's saying, Hey, Mr. Computer, are you okay or not? And he'll say, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. And he'll go to the next computer. And he'll say, hey, Mr. Computer, are you okay? And he'll say, oh, not feeling too well today. I've got this problem, and I've got this problem, and I've got this problem. And then the little scan tool will say, hey, tell us about it, mister. And he'll put up a special code that we can read to try and help him feel better. Okay, SJ, we're going to change the brake pads in the back of the car, but this has electronic handbrake system. So we need to change, or we need to get the handbrake uh, motors to pull back, and you can do that in this section here where there's a special function. Can you see that one that says brake pad change? Can you press that for me, please? The next one down. There we go. Press that. And parking brake, press the blue one there, 8R. So we need to press that one there, down the bottom. This function needs to be conducted when replacing the rear brake pads of vehicles fitted with electronic park brake system. Conditions, maintain a sufficient level of battery voltage. Yes, we've done that. Turn the ignition on and the engine off. Yes. Switch the engine park braking on and off. Make sure that the electronic parking braking is in the off position before commencing. Now I can see it from here. It's not in the on position, so we're right to go. So click our OK up the top there, please. Yep, that one. 
That's it. Okay, so F2, that one right there. We'll just check that one. Have a listen. Okay, so at this point, this little motor here is spinning back out and that will allow the pads then to be changed when we need to. The rear brake pads are ready to be replaced. Please turn the ignition off and replace the rear brake pads. Okay, so we'll do that now. We can also note here that the handbrake, electronic handbrake is flashing. So that tells us that we're in service mode. So you make sure that you disconnect your scan tool from the car, you turn the ignition off and put the key away from the vehicle. So there's no chance of it firing up again. So now we can go ahead and replace our brake pads. The next section is not that difficult, fairly common in this style of brakes. We simply use a, what's that, let's say a 15 mil spanner and also a 13 mil spanner. 15 just to hold the lock nut assembly here, 13 to get over here to undo that big lock nut at the back. And we go like that. And eventually we should be able to make that free. Not too bad. Let's try that other side. There we go. Hit it with the ugga dugga gun. Problem solved. And this section here should come off. Now that we've got the piston assembly off the caliper housing here, and we've also rewound our handbrake assembly using the scan tool, we should be able to push our piston back just using a normal rewind tool, our brake caliper rewind tool, and that should just push back. Just keep in mind, of course, that you don't want brake fluid coming up through your master cylinder, so you might want to uh, remove some of that brake fluid out of the master cylinder before you push this back any further. So once you've replaced the battery in your camera, as well as removing some brake fluid from up at the master cylinder, you can continue to wind back your brake piston in the caliper itself. So if we just wind him back nicely, it's going back quite easily. And uh, once that's pushed back all the way, then we can replace our brake pads. And of course, before I do anything else, I'm gonna check the fluid level in the master cylinder, just to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not having is issues with it being too high. Right, so it's back all the way now, perfect. Okay, so we can pop out our brake pads now, have a look at them, they're pretty low, like that. And as you can see, they're pretty low, hey? There's not much left in them. So they're definitely, definitely needed replacement. I might even just tidy up this with a bit of emery tape just to make sure it's in good nick. There's a bit of a lip there. Ideally, I'd like to see the disc replaced, but uh, in this particular case, they're gonna be left as is. I've checked with my micrometer to find out the minimum thickness of this solid rotor. Now I've checked on forums, etc., and it appears for a solid rotor, it's meant to be around about the 10 mil thickness. Now it's pretty hard to see here with my bad eyesight, so I've taken a photo of it, and you can see for yourself there, hopefully out of the light, that, that looks like about 10.59. So we're certainly well within the limit. There's a bit of meat left on the thing, but I might just tidy up some of those edges to make it easier to seat the new brake pads. So I've carefully used a die grinder just to remove a bit of that ridge on the edge of the disc there. Hopefully that should be okay. SJ's in the background. I don't know, using a pretend computer there to uh, add up the bill. I also like to use a little wire brush here to clean up some of the hardware or the springs that put tension onto the brake pad themselves. And it's a good idea just to clean up any uh, dust or anything like that. Make sure that they're in good condition and make sure you don't breathe in the uh, dust, of course. Uh, we've got all that done there. So that's ready to go. We can put our new pads in now. This is our apprentice of the future. You know, if you can get free labor, that's the important thing. So make sure that you uh, work, work them as hard as you possibly can. No, nah, I'm just kidding, she's enjoying herself. Are you having fun, SJ? Yeah. Good, that's all that matters. Nice job, well done. Now it appears that all these pads are the same, so they should fit into place nicely. They just locate into here, um, just past these springs here in like that and ugh. Ah, come on get in there fella come on you know you wanna in like that as well nice jobs done we also have to be aware of these little lugs here as part of the caliper 
I like to use some disc brake quiet and just put a dab there and there so that it keeps uh, quietness because most of the squeaking noise is between metal parts, between this part and this part and that's why they usually put on some sort of steel plate or something along those lines to try and stop any noise. But I like to add just a little bit of this stuff to help aid the uh, quietness of the event, I guess you could say. And also a little bit on the piston here as well. So I'll pop in the other uh, pad on the back side, put a bit of this here and a little bit of that there. But there's something else also that we need to do before we do anything else. We need to pull out our slides and check the condition of them. Make sure that they're in good condition, that they're not wobbly in the actual housing themselves. If there's too much movement there, you're going to get brake movement, etc. You'll end up with shutter, all those sort of conditions, incorrect brake pad wear as well. So we want to make sure that they're in good condition. Also, the boots need to make sure that they're not split or anything like that. I also clean them up and I like to use just a little bit of anti-seize. You can see that it's pretty grotty, that little fella there. But just a tiny bit of anti-seize on the slides themselves and hopefully that should help um, with lubrication and movement of the thing itself. Right, so I'm happy with what I've done. The slides are now clean. They have some new anti-seize compound in there. Grotty hands. Um, I've also got some anti-seize compound on there, perhaps a little bit too much. Getting a bit excited there. But I should be able to fit these fellas back into place. Finally, when I've got the caliper back into place, I like to put in my lock nuts here with a tiny bit of Loctite. So I just use the medium strength style here. Uh, that way you can undo it in the future. Just a couple of drops. Oops, there we go. And it should be ready to go. Plonk him back in there. Tighten it up using the appropriate torque wrench, which is pretty much one nugget ugger. One more drop there. That goes down into this section over here. SJ's in the background mumbling to herself, so that's what you hear there, guys. You want to take a picture of the magpie, do you? Did it? Oh, that's no good. <laughs> oh, dear me. Goodness me, goodness me. All right, we should be able to do that with, with our ugga dugga machine. Ugga dugga machine. Oh, what's the other one like? Hmm? Yeah. Tighten that up nice, nicely. Now this one, I don't think I can get onto it properly. I'll tighten that up properly with a spanner. And make sure that's all good. Tight. And also tight. Okay, this fella is now ready. Uh, we can go over to the other side, rinse and repeat, head in with our scan tool, and then we can uh, reset the handbrake. One of the final things that you need to do to make sure that your vehicle or your customer is safe is the wheel tensions. According to auto data, you can see that the road wheels are 140 newton meters. we can now re-engage the electronic handbrake. At this point, we can put our ignition in and press it once so that all the reds come on the dash. Another good feature I forgot to mention about the G-Scan 3 is that it has this service function on the main page. If we hit the service function there, it comes up with brake pad replacement. We can hit on that. We can come up with our Audi once again, automatic selection. We've OK our VIN, parking brake, OK. EBD pad exchange except Audi A8. This is not an A8. We bring up the functions, etc. We OK that. So we want to close our rear parking brake now. That's F3. Listen carefully and you can hear the motor winding in as it gets back to its original position. And, and there we go. It's now set in its position. Also, the parking brake lever light is now gone out. It's no longer flashing. It's no longer in service mode. So we should be able to turn it off and on accordingly. The park brake light is now out before it was flashing when it was in service mode. If we want to put it on now, it's simply a matter of leaving, levering it up and the light should go solid, which it is. 
and if we want to turn it off we can press like that but nothing happens what do we need to do the dash states that we have to put our foot on the brake pedal before the handbrake will come off so now with my foot on the park brake you can hear it disengage so the handbrake's working perfectly and uh, the, the brake pedal is nice and solid all I need to do is go for a road test it's also important to make sure that you put your wheel nut lock back where it belongs and that's in the back here in where the spare wheel is kind of there's another little panel that's hidden down here your spare wheel is just there and we get another panel and another panel and it's hidden just down here so we plonk our little fella our little uh, special tool we put him just in here job is done the customer now knows that it's been put back in its correct position that goes down that goes down everything else goes down so that's how you replace brake pads on an audi q5 2011 model it wasn't that hard was it guys but make sure that the um, electronic parking brake gets put into service mode so that it gets pulled back allowing for those brake pads to be replaced pretty important uh, method or procedure to be done I hope you enjoyed this video guys and you got something from it if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel give it a like and feel free to comment down below of course don't forget about that notification bell you don't want to miss any future videos so until next time guys this is Miracle Max signing off catch you later catch you later bye bye